Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the last session of the day before we go on to the CNCF event party. I'm Alolita Sharma, and um, I would like to introduce fellow members uh, of the GC as well as maintainers on the Open Telemetry Project. Um, Ted, would you like to go first? Sure. My name's Ted Young. Uh, I work at LightStep, but I'm an uh, Open Telemetry Governance Committee member and one of the co-founders. My name is Morgan McLean. I'm also one of the co-founders of Open Telemetry, also on the Governance Committee. I'm a director of PM at Splunk. My name is Dan Dyla. I work at Dynatrace. Uh, I am a maintainer of the Open Telemetry JS client and on the Governance Committee. Cool. And uh, again, just to complete my introduction, uh, Alorita Sharma, on member of the Open Telemetry Governance Committee, have been contributing to the project for multiple years now. And I also lead series observability at Apple. So um, super happy to be here today. All right, so with that said, again, um, I wanted to kind of run through what we have accomplished on the project in the last year. We gave an update at Valencia earlier this year uh, in the spring. And um, as many of you who may have attended that session or not, uh, we in last year started working on logging, which was a big, you know, pillar for the project, as well as uh, going beyond traces and metric support. We also last year, you know, kicked off the Prometheus Open Metrics uh, Hotel Interop Group, where we actually worked through um, making sure that the OTLP protocol was fully compatible with uh, Open Metrics as a metric standard, as well as Prometheus, which also uses open metrics as the baseline. And we've made good progress there. Tracing was also GA'd last year in uh, October. And uh, again, uh, you know, that was functionality that we had inherited from open tracing and open census, but then we also actually did a fundamental amount of work on open tracing, uh, on tracing itself, in order to not only harden the collector, but also complete the implementation in the APIs and SDKs. We also started working on telemetry schemas, uh, specifically the open telemetry specification. As many of you who may be using open telemetry or have looked at the project, the specification again provides a requirement spec for the project to implement both on the collector agent as well as the 11 language APIs and SDKs that exist on the project for instrumentation of your applications. And then going on from there, we also start, uh, ensured stability of the logs data model, which was also announced at the Valencia KubeCon conference earlier this spring. Going forward, fast forward from there, what we have actually accomplished on the project in the next six months, uh, which uh, wanted to step through, very excited to see client instrumentation kick off because that's something that is fundamentally very important for end users and users and developers who are actually instrumenting with uh, APIs and SDKs into their applications. So that SIG was started and there's been work ongoing in that area. This also includes the real user monitoring uh, integration that was and the uh, definition and the semantic conventions that is been done on the SIG. Uh, the end user working group was established, which actually enables end users, uh, you know, companies that are adopting open telemetry for collection to actually participate in the project, provide feedback, provide requirements, and be able to work together with the maintainers and contributors to the project to implement the spec. And uh, last but not least, big accomplishment, metrics GA which the project you know, has completed and has delivered. We also are very excited in the last month to have kickstarted the profiling work group, uh, which was actually one of the suggestions that started kind of uh, you know, at the Valencia discussions for project, uh, in the project meeting that we had there, and then you know, has really culminated in an OTEP that was discussed in the tag observability and then submitted as a profiling uh, open telemetry enhancement proposal in the last month. 
So uh, needless to say, uh, the open telemetry demo, which also many of the contributors have been working on, is also now available. And with that said, I also wanted to call out there's more instrumentation down the line, better documentation work that's happening on the project, lots of activity on C++, Erlang, and Swift, and some of the other improvements that we will step through as we talk through uh, some of the uh, slides that are coming up. All right, so with that said, Daniel, over to you. Yeah, so I'm going to give a, a short community update uh, for those that were at the community meeting on Tuesday. Some of this will look familiar. Uh, but we really wanted to highlight uh, how much of a collaborative effort uh, open telemetry is and has been and continues to be even more so. Uh, for those that don't know, we are the second most active CNCF project behind uh, Kubernetes, which you may have heard of. Um, and this is what our contribution graph looks like for the last year. Uh, yes, graphs that go up are always good on the slide, but in this case, it really shows that uh, the two numbers are uh, not only the number of active contributors, but the number of active uh, contributing companies. So it's an extremely collaborative environment, uh, and more and more uh, companies and individual contributors, and particularly end users, uh, have really been stepping up in the last year, which has been awesome and really great to see. Uh, we have just pulled out a, a list here of some of the larger contributing companies. Uh, what we really wanted to highlight here, though, was uh, you know a handful of these, almost half, really, are uh, end users and not really vendors. So the project started as sort of a, a very vendor-heavy project, but we always had a vision for it to be you know built and maintained by the people who use it. Uh, and it's been really nice to see that actually begin to start happening. Uh, one other thing that I did also want to mention, uh, we did just finish our GC elections for the last year. Uh, this year we had 513 eligible voters, uh, 219 of which actually voted. So for anybody here that participated in the election, uh, thank you for your, uh, you know, for your participation. Uh, without people to tell us what they want, then the project really wouldn't go anywhere. Uh, and it was nice to see that you know, numbers were very healthy. Um, I was reelected as well as Alalita uh, and Morgan reelected this year, but also uh, welcoming Trask Stalnacker uh, from Microsoft to the GC. Uh, so we were very excited about that. All right. So now it's going to Ted. Yeah. Sorry, Ted. <laughs> yeah. So uh, one thing I want to uh, dig into that I think is especially of interest to the community is the new Open Telemetry demo project. Uh, so just to walk through really quick what this is and what it does, it is your classic kind of distributed microservice application. It's a web store that sells telescopes because that's what we like around OpenTelemetry. And uh, it's made up of a variety of different services in a variety of different languages, all instrumented with OpenTelemetry. So if you click to the next slide. Um, it also has uh, feature flagging uh, for being able to enable and disable different kinds of problems uh, within the demo application. So what you can do is very easily stand this up, uh, especially using like a Kubernetes operator um, or Docker if you're running it locally, and uh, hook it up to your backend of choice or a local Jaeger instance, for example and uh, enable some of these problems and then go do your own investigation. So it's a great way to actually see open telemetry in action. Go to the next slide. It's also a great place to look if you're thinking about standing up open telemetry yourself. The source code is available for every service so you can go in and see how we've actually added instrumentation to that service. So if you're getting started with open telemetry and you're just looking for a nice, easy, like copy paste example for how to get started, the uh, demo project is actually a great place to, to find that code. Um, and if you uh, take this QR code, that will take you to uh, uh, the documentation for all of that. Uh, we also have a nice blog post that kind of like gets into more detail about this whole thing. So if you're interested in the demo project, this is kind of a good starting point. And I just wanted to call out on the demo project again, as you can see, you know, there's a very uh, interesting ontology that is built across the dependencies of the 
different components as well as you know what you instrument with. So again, go check it out. It is really interesting and would love to see more folks contribute you know, to add your own use cases to it. That's it, Morgan. Yeah, so you. we're gonna talk about the roadmap. Um, so Ali did a great introduction of all of the progress that we've made uh, since OpenTelemetry was founded and certainly in the last year. Uh, on the project, so things like uh, hotel metrics going GA and, and other really critical components. Um, but it's, we're in an interesting time now. Like metrics and distributed tracing were the original promise of open telemetry. Um, those were the two data types we'd originally called out. Logs, of course, uh, were, were one that we added uh, or we started working on relatively recently. But still, it leaves us as a community with an opportunity here to decide what we want to work on next. And, and uh, so we've taken some time here at KubeCon to meet with community members. We had about, I think, 75 people show up at the community meeting um, to discuss where we want to go from here as a project. And we'll see if this works. Oh, yep. Um, before we actually get into that, though, I want to describe exactly the state of things today. So distributed tracing uh, has been uh, generally available for some time with an open telemetry. Uh, and if you look at all the languages we have, obviously we've added languages over time as well, which makes it a little complex. Uh, but tracing is stable on almost all of our languages. And those that it's not stable on is in a beta state and is somewhat usable. Um, metrics, similarly, in, in May in KubeCon Valencia, we announced that the uh, metric specification was now stable. And here uh, at KubeCon uh, Detroit, we're able to show off the various languages in which metrics functionality is now fully baked. And that's considered GA stable. There are going to be no breaking changes there uh, going forward unless there's a, like another major release of OpenTelemetry uh, years into the future. Um, so we've, we've achieved like a lot of success here on metrics. Blogs, of course, being the column on the right. Uh, you see not a whole lot of blue there. Uh, but that's going to be the next sort of big area of focus for the project is getting logs to the same state as, as tracing and metrics. And of course, we'll be filling in metrics as well for more languages over time. What this means in practical terms, if you're an end user or someone who's, who's interested in adopting OpenTelemetry at your organization, is that you can use OpenTelemetry today to capture spans, to capture system metrics, application metrics, and metadata from your services and from your infrastructure. Uh, as well as a few other sources. You can pre-process this data, typically with the OpenTelemetry collector. There's a lot of flexibility and capabilities there. Uh, and then you can send it to any destination you want for final processing, storage, or analytics. Right? This is the original promise and intent of OpenTelemetry, and it's something that we've now generally achieved at this point, which is you know, it's worth celebrating as a community. And we see, certainly across the industry, like hundreds, if not you know, thousands of large organizations are already adopted or in the midst of adopting OpenTelemetry as a result, because it gives them these capabilities and allows them to send their data wherever they want in a nicely structured, correlatable format. Uh, there's a few things that we're working on now. Unfortunately, this is animated one by one. Uh, so I think uh, Alida already mentioned the end user working group, so I'm not going to uh, touch too much on that. Uh, but the critical items here on the roadmap um, are that we're working, uh, we've expanded our web maintainer team, which is working on documentation and the OpenSolumetry website, which makes it easier to adopt, easier to use. We're also going to be focusing on improving the contributor experience going forward in many ways, though, given the graph that, Dan that uh, Daniel showed with the number of people working on the project. This is also, in some sense, taking care of itself because we have more maintainers and more contributors than we've had in the past, which is excellent. Uh, for the roadmap, though, the very meaty items that if you're an end user, the ones you really, really care about, uh, we'll, for those, we'll start with OpAmp. So this is an open telemetry control plane that's being specified and developed right now. Today, you can configure open telemetry components relatively easily. The collector, for example, has a large set of YAML markup that you can modify and implement to go configure processing on the collector and, and configure what it receives data from and where it sends that data to. But you have to go and deploy and distribute that YAML file alongside the collector on every host that it's running on. Similarly, there's, there's configuration for other open telemetry components like language agents and language libraries. Uh, with OpAmp, what we'll be doing is allowing those components optionally to be controlled via APIs um, so that in, in theory and eventually in practice, you could have a central server or service somewhere that is actually controlling and configuring your open telemetry components live. So you can make configuration changes on the fly uh, and you can more easily manage the configuration of your thousands or tens or hundreds of thousands of open telemetry components that you have running live in production or non-prod environments. It's early days for OpMap, but it's very, very exciting, and I know there's, there's a lot of uh, community enthusiasm around it. Uh, another item on the roadmap is client instrumentation. Uh, so yes, if you looked closely in the past, you would have noticed OpenTelemetry.js has had support for capturing some level of instrumentation from front-end websites. Uh, this is now being formalized and extended so that we can extend people's visibility 
not just to their backend services, but extend that all the way out to their client applications running on mobile phones, running on desktops, running on, on front end websites that anyone's accessing. Um, so you can have true end to end observability across those. For example, you can have a distributed trace uh, that, that is, uh, starts uh, from a client and actually shows you uh, the amount of like client latency or client wait time that was incurred like due to local processing. Uh, and also you can use it to determine the amount of like internet latency that caused slowness. That's one example of what you can do with this, but I think there's a lot of power and potential coming out of this. The next and probably the most sort of topical for here is uh, profiling. We're adding profiles as a new native data type within OpenTelemetry. Uh, this is a topic that actually came up at KubeCon Valencia at the community meeting. It hadn't really been considered previously uh, and is now going to be a major part of OpenTelemetry. We have a large SIG working on defining what profiles are, how they can be captured performantly, how they can be integrated with the other data types. Uh, and we're going to implement this as a, a new signal type within OpenTelemetry that will then be implemented across the different languages that uh, compose uh, OpenTelemetry. It's also kind of exciting because uh, OpenTelemetry, I think, in the early days, there were a lot of familiar faces, the same sort of people working on everything. Profiling is one place where it's brought an influx of new users and contributors to the community, which is also really exciting. Uh, and it's people who literally showed up to the community meeting in Valencia and various others who got engaged and involved, which is great. Uh, we'll also be working on fully implementing logs within OpenTelemetry. Uh, we've talked about this one a lot at previous conf conferences. I'm not going to go into too much detail on it. Uh, just there's, you know, the logging support will uh, exist for existing log sources, so files on disk that get tailed, as well as an OpenTelemetry native logging type that will be extremely performant. Uh, it's a binary, strongly typed format for capturing logs, so you don't have to parse logs multiple times with agents and backend processors. Uh, very exciting, but of course, for, traditional, for existing apps, you would use the files on disk. Uh, Ted already mentioned the demo application, so I'm going to skip right past that. Uh, there's also um, some proposals around file-based configuration. This ties into OpAmp. Uh, so using YAML files to configure all uh, OpenTelemetry components, not just the collector. Today, most of them are configured through other means. We want to make that consistent for people who choose to have that. Um, I'm going to skip through these because I already talked about them, but effectively client instrumentation, again, allows you to do things like see traces from your client apps all the way through to your backend, uh, backend services as you, uh, th th today that's somewhat segregated, uh, but in the future, um, with this, you can see those traces or other, um, types of telemetry spanning all the way from user interactions, all the way to your services to database calls on the backend. I uh, already talked about profiling as well. Got ahead of my new slides. Going forward, what this means, so I talked about our current state of today in practical terms. In practical terms, once we have completed the items that are now on the roadmap, it means that you're going to be kept capturing logs and profiles in addition to the types of data you're already capturing, uh, and you're going to be capturing those from client applications in addition to your existing services and infrastructure. Uh, and you can try all of that out uh, inside of our wonderful pre-built demo application that Ted uh, described. Alita, do you want to take this? So um, I wanted to kind of go through some of the areas that have been discussed, you know, in the last few months, as well as in the project discussions that we have had earlier this, uh, this week at KubeCon, where um, these are some of the um, proposals that have been, you know, brought up by the larger community, by end users, as well as other developers. And... Um, I just wanted to kind of run through some of them so that, you know, very interested in kind of getting feedback from all of you, you know, as we work through as some of these and consider them as proposals. Uh, first of all, uh, CI system, CI CD systems where we build and deploy our applications are becoming increasingly uh, integrated into what is observable. And uh, capturing telemetry from CI CD systems uh, and defining semantic conventions for those is something that's super uh, important as you deploy production systems and you want to ensure that what you're pushing to the client or to the server uh, or services, for that matter, are you know, fully t uh, observable and tested out, right? So again, we will, you know, this is a proposal that was made by some of the, you know, some parts of the community and so it's under consideration. Another area that, uh, you know, is also being discussed is how do we actually uh, enable more Kubernetes uh, metadata to be visible and observable and increasing the visibility into the infrastructure, you know, Kubernetes-based infrastructure that most of us uh, use. 
uh, for our applications and services. Another proposal is the, uh, and again, this is a contentious one, but you know, again, also a, a project in itself, um, having a standard query format for being able to query telemetry data. Because here you are, you're going to collect petabytes and petabytes of observable you know, telemetry data coming in from different system components, both on the client and the app and the service side. And how do you actually query this kind of data? Is it useful to have a standard query format? And for many of you, you might have used some query languages. SQL, how many of you have used SQL? Many of you. Uh, PromQL, some of you. Uh, what about Elastic query language, right? So there's so many different query languages in the observability space at this point that it also you know, is something that intersects very much with the collection process and really making it a much richer experience. But that said, again, I think this is something under discussion that we will take to the TAG observability uh, work group to work through there and then um, figure out you know, how we can work through a standardized query format proposal. Other discussions that have come, in, come up are semantic conventions. Again, establishing semantic conventions for cloud spend. Again, how many of you run on public cloud infrastructure or your own clouds? Hopefully everyone. <laughs> But uh, again, usage and spend is a big deal for most organizations. And we'd like to better understand right, how that infrastructure actually uh, is being used by as different teams across the orgs use this infrastructure. And, and how does that then measure into what you plan for in terms of provisioning the, year, the next year? So there's a lot of intersection there. And just while I was curious, please you know, raise your hands if you're interested in cloud spend. Hopefully, many of you are. Uh, emissions is another area from, from a sustainability standpoint that you know, we hope to cross collaborate with some other discussions on the tax sustainability that has re recently been uh, created, but also other uh, projects in the observability space to see if there's uh, common semantics conventions again that can be established. And last but not least, uh, security use cases with SIM semantic conventions, because that's another huge area that intersects with the kind of observable data that you want to make available for security use cases, right? So again, just wanted to call that out, that these are areas that you can actually contribute in. If you are subject matter experts or just working in that space, I invite you all to uh, consider joining in into our discussions on the project as well as helping us establish those semantic conventions that can then be used by everybody, right? So uh, again, it's an easy process to get involved. We have weekly uh, SIG meetings and SIG calls, and they're all on the Google Calendar for CNCF, and would really love for you, you know, many of you to get involved more actively. Last but not least, I think, uh, back to you, yeah. Morgan. Um, we wanted to talk a bit just to close this out about our long-term vision, right? Observability and open telemetry being a part of observability. I think, you know, people have heard pitches and things from open source groups, from vendors, from others, talking about how critical it is. But I think in practice today, most people use their observability tools as a last resort. It's the thing you run to when the alarms are going off, when you get paged, when everything has gone wrong, and it tells you what went wrong and hopefully how to fix it, right? That's how we interact with these. Uh, certainly observability, I think for most people, there's a perception it grew out of monitoring tools, uh, and monitoring tools were typically used in that, in that kind of scenario. Our vision with open telemetry and, and our expectation is that over time, observability tools, which of course are enriched and powered by the data that comes out of open telemetry, are going to be used much more frequently. Right? Like, I'm sure there's people here who have been in situations in their career where they're working on a sufficiently large set of services. Of course, technologies like cloud infrastructure and Kubernetes make it very easy for us to spin up all these services and make them communicate. And I'm sure there's people who have been in situations where they've had to go and describe how these different services interact because you're in a sufficiently large organization where you know, very few engineers or technical staff are able to draw the full map or a sufficiently large map of these services. This is one example of a place where I think observability tools will be used more in, day, in people's day-to-day -day lives, right? If you're a developer, if you can rely on having a service map, for example, and again, it's just 
one example, uh, that's drawn, that's totally reliable uh, from your observability tooling, and indeed you can investigate that service map to see how certain interactions are processed, uh, it means that when you're told to go extend your services, because maybe you work at an e-commerce company and you've been told go implement you know, the sales of bundled products, for example, which maybe wasn't done before your e-commerce stack, you're told to implement that, you now need to go touch like 10, 15 different services to do it, this tooling is going to help you during the design phase and implementation phase of doing that uh, in a way that today you'd have to go, you know, liaise with a whole bunch of people to find out how things work. This is one example, one slice, I think, of how observability tools will be used going forward, where they will extend from just being tooling and things that you use when all hope is lost and everything has gone wrong to being that you rely on as an engineer uh, throughout your day-to-day -day, uh, uh, work cycle, as you do with accessing you know, source control and various other things, um, or at least within the same order of magnitude. There are other scenarios, like testing uh, 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 and others, that I think also will benefit very strongly from open telemetry and observability tooling as it becomes more and more adopted across the industry. And certainly within the open telemetry community, this is something we're really, really excited to have a part in uh, because it's going to make everyone's lives and jobs and everything uh, way, way better and, and, and easier. Uh, so it's just a very exciting time for the community, not just because of the growth that Daniel showed earlier, but also I think of the, the potential that's coming in with open telemetry uh, and the tooling that'll be based off of it that's analyzing that data. Can you click next slide? <laughs> oh. Perfect. Uh, to formally wrap this up, uh, next steps for people. If you're a, a, if you want to use or using open telemetry, there's never been a better time to adopt it. Like chasing is super robust. It's being used across the industry. Metrics now is is stable and 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 really we're seeing it, its adoption really accelerate uh, across the industry, which is exciting. Open telemetry gives you that flexibility of sending your data and processing your data anywhere you want. Indeed, you can send your your production telemetry to to any number of destinations at the same time, uh, and it also gives you that really nice, uh, strongly correlated uh, sort of structured data out of your applications and infrastructure in a way that you may not have had it uh, previously. Um, our basic logging functionality is also fairly robust. There are companies already using it in fairly high-scale production. Like earlier this year, I was at a talk by, I think, Lockheed Martin about how they're using it across all their Kubernetes infrastructure. Um, like, you can go use it. It works. Um, it's marked unstable just because it's possible the configs or things will change in the future, and we're adding more functionality. Uh, and, of course, more advanced logging scenarios that the, the sort of native logging type I described earlier, profiling and client instrumentation are all coming to open telemetry soon. Uh, and it means you can adopt them very, very easily if you're already using open telemetry. Secondly, if you want to contribute to open telemetry, if there's a particular part, either existing functionality or things in the roadmap that we've discussed today that you're interested in, uh, please like join us, like join our, our, CNC, our channels on CNCF Slack uh, or join the weekly SIG calls. Uh, open telemetry, it's, it's, it's not a business, right? Like we, we have this roadmap, this proposed roadmap we have up here, but you know, I and Ted and Daniel and Alita and other people can't, you know, go and tell everyone what they need to work on. Developers and the contributors vote with their feet, right? And so if there's a thing here that you want to see enhanced or put more firepower behind, please, like, come in, join us. You are always welcome to this community. You're always welcome to help. Um, things, initiatives like profiling have started and taken off because, you know, tens of developers have come in all at once and said, like, I want to add this and I'm going to uh, work on the design and implementation of it. So if you have any interest in that, please join us. We'd love to have you. Uh, and as I mentioned, the, the best way to get involved is by joining either a weekly SIG call or the Slack channel uh, for that particular area in which you are interested in. Uh, and with that, we're done. Uh, we'd love to take questions from anyone. Uh, I see a couple open telemetry maintainers uh, as well. If you guys, if you're interested in taking questions, please come up here uh, if you're an hotel maintainer. Otherwise, if the audience has any questions, we and the maintainers are happy to answer them. Yes. Um, yeah, you mentioned sort of uh, query languages and things, and you were looking at or exploring sort of candidates for query languages. Um, have you sort of considered GraphQL as an option because the ability to sort of stitch sch uh, schemas together and sort of map that in with other yeah. data? I think we mentioned that one mostly because there's there's clearly an appetite for it. Like especially yeah. in the last few months, people have been asking. Like many different people have come and asking for this. To be clear, this project may not, in fact, likely won't end up being part of open telemetry. Like we want to keep Otel very bounded on data extraction and data collection. 
Uh, but I think, as Al Lita mentioned, yeah. the CNCF tag fact, might pick it in up. In fact, uh, I mean, we are actually uh, going to start a series of discussions uh, on exactly, you know, kind of working through the nuances of what a proposal would look like. And also, yes, we have looked at the GraphQL model and several other query languages. Obviously, GraphQL is very popular. There are other uh, query languages also on the client side that should be looked at. But again, let's go through that process. And uh, again, super happy if you can join in for yeah. those discussions. Yeah, just to, to add some color onto that, one of the things, when you look at it, you have some like very general purpose kind of querying things, right, like SQL. And then you have stuff that was like built to purpose in the observability space, but it has been built to like a specific subset of the kind of grouping of signals that we're doing. And there hasn't yet been, as far as I can tell, like an open query language that was built specifically to target the data set that we're looking at. So that's kind of like one of the big questions is how can we use like pre-existing work, but then adapt it to something that's specific enough to the kind of data that we're looking at that it's not not like overly generalized the way SQL might be, for example. Cool. Hi, uh, you talked about adding cost and uh, emissions in the roadmap, right? I yesterday came across uh, FinOps Foundation in the showcase area. They, they seem also pretty to be in the Linux Foundation hierarchy. So how will the boundaries be? Or like, can you give some more color on that? Really? I mean, uh, typically how that works is that uh, uh, if there are collaborative projects, and again, there can be overlapping you know, feature sets and functionality that is being looked at or discussed or worked on in, in different CNCF projects. So typically, you know, that does, uh, as we work through the semantic conventions, as we work through the proposal itself of what you know a baseline looks like, uh, we typically would try to go and intersect with those projects also and see if we can leverage some of the work that they have done. So it's a collaborative effort in other words. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, data extraction and data collection certainly you know part of the story you're trying to achieve that, but data storage is another you know piece of the puzzle, right? Any roadmap, any, any thoughts around data storage? Because, you know, organizations like us, if you want to implement, you know, the yep. next question, people like it, next question comes is how do we implement it across 300 different things, right? That's yeah. how the scale matters. We've purposely avoided doing data storage in open telemetry. Like, to be clear, the, there's many reasons for it. Uh, one is that open telemetry has, has I think Daniel and Ali showed like there's a lot of end users contributing, but there's also a lot of vendors in the space. By keeping the project bounded to just data collection, it means they're very, very collaborative and very cooperative. I think there's a concern that if the project started getting into data storage and analytics and, and things like that, that would perhaps change the, the level of cooperation there. But secondly, legitimately, there's, there's a number of CNCF projects that already focus on this, right? Prometheus is a great metrics backend. It, Processes metrics. Uh, Jaeger has a really, it's really great at processing distributed traces. Um, there's other, you know, various open source solutions for logging, Elastic probably being the most popular. Um, and so I, I don't know if there's a whole lot of thought on open telemetry or the whole lot of thinking that we can somehow improve on, on data storage and analytics in the open source where other projects like these or like Skywalking or others have, have uh, not already done. But I think uh, just to your point, um, storage is very important, obviously in the observability pipeline. And, and you know, a unified experience is also equally important to users who are actually building such uh, complex pipelines, right? So uh, interoperability from the collection side in terms of being able to connect with a diversity of data sinks uh, whether that's Prometheus for metrics or, you know, Jaeger for tracing or other logging databases. Again, there are a multitude of exporters that are already available in the collector, in the open telemetry collector, and you can use those. But if there is a data sync that is missing in the open telemetry, you know, integrations, then please feel free to, you know, work with us, make a proposal, and typically, you know, they get added very quickly. 
So there is a huge diversity of data uh, sources as well as data sinks that are actually integrated into open telemetry. And uh, again, if you see anything missing, just please, you know, propose. Yeah. Uh, just to slightly rephrase it, um, we see open telemetry as a standardization project. And it seems very doable to standardize describing, like developing a language for describing what our systems are doing. And it seems reasonable to also standardize um, like a processing pipeline for like egressing that data. But when it comes to analyzing that data, that really seems like a very green field area, especially now when we're getting into like you have unified integrated data, people bringing in all kinds of st big data statistical processing stuff that wasn't available in the future. So it really feels like that's not a place you want to standardize right now. Instead, you want to be very flexible working with all the people trying to develop uh, new stuff. So that's, that's like beyond just like there's vendors involved. I think it's, it's like not feasible to standardize on that. Uh, and we Jurassic, should try. Do you want to say something? Oh yeah, sure. While we're waiting for him, I would also add that projects like uh, Jaeger and Prometheus have been working much more closely because the, the telemetry data between your traces, metrics, and logs are now so much more like contextually related in a way that they never were in the past. It allows those other projects to, to collaborate in a way that they maybe couldn't have before. Um, so as those projects continue to improve, maybe the need for a single data storage for all three, you know, traces, metrics, logs, profiles, whatever, the, the need for that is lessened because the existing tools are more empowered. Yeah, so um, on a specification level, uh, it's all true, right? So uh, we don't want to specify a data format to, um, you know, we don't want to tell people how to store data on disk. Um, on the other hand, there are some efforts like est um, establishing an OTLP data format for columnar storage. And that one can be used by the collector uh, to do a collector exporter that then writes um, uh, OTLP data to disk, which then can be read by, by other systems. Right, so it is not a specification, but it is a, an effort from individuals, like uh, Morgan mentioned, we are um, uh, action, um, uh, uh, <laughs> the actions of the individuals uh, actually define the roadmap, actually define what is the, uh, the, the features that are being developed. And there have been people on, in, in the community that have, um, has written exporters to write things to disk. So you can store, you can read, but it's not part of any specification. Another question over here. Is it difficult to only use a portion of the open telemetry or yeah, the open telemetry library? So say for example, I'm already using the language specific Prometheus libraries for metrics. I've already got a mostly functioning log set up and I'm just interested in the tracing portion. Is that relatively easy to set up or yep. are they super opinionated? I mean that's that's effectively how everyone up until earlier this year was using open telemetry because okay. only traces was stable. Yeah, no, it's it's super straightforward. It works fine. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, Short the, answer, yes. It's yeah. just completely configuration driven so you can actually to set it up specifically for tracing or specifically for a spe yeah. uh, one signal. Yeah, and to add slightly more flavor, there's we've also done a lot of work to separate out um, the API that you instrument with, with the um, client or implementation that you would plug into that. So it's also feasible to say, if you do end up with instrumentation that say like open telemetry metrics instrumentation, it's it's fairly straightforward to create a bridge uh, from that instrumentation, say, into like a Prometheus client that you're already running there. So we, we really care quite a bit about that kind of flexibility. All right, and I think we got the signal that we're at time. So thank you very much for attending, everyone. Uh, please get involved in the community if you have any interest in it.